It's an exciting day at the channel today because I've just received a running shoe that I've really been looking forward to testing out. So a few years ago, when I first ran in these, this is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V2. I was super impressed with how this shoe performed. Super lightweight, a very comfortable, responsive midsole, and the upper fitted my foot shape like a glove. And you know, it was just an exciting shoe to run in considering it was a daily trainer, and it still feels pretty good now. However, when it got updated to the Rebel V3, still a really nice shoe to run in. I got on with them, but I just feel that the midsole didn't have the same sort of bouncy, high energy returning feel that you've got with the previous version. But I'm happy to say we've just got another update and we've just received the new fuel cell rebel v4 so this very popular lightweight neutral daily trainer has gone through quite a few changes this time round. so it's pretty much a brand new shoe from the ground up and i've got to say it it's a pretty good looking shoe so we're going to run you through a few stats we're going to break down the construction quickly and then i'm going to be hitting the roads and testing out the new rebel v4 Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video here at the channel. So it looks like the New Balance brand are gonna have another strong year as far as sort of new releases are concerned and hopefully we're gonna test out a lot of their up and coming models throughout the year. But I've gotta say it, this is probably the shoe I've been looking forward to the most and I've been hearing lots of great feedback about the Rebel V4s from the States. The Rebel model has always been designed to be a, a very lightweight, versatile daily trainer option so it's a shoe that can pretty much handle anything whether it's long steady runs tempos intervals or even lacing them up on race day it really is a running shoe that can kind of tick every box making it very versatile but the new version the v4s is going to retail in the uk for 140 pounds and it's due for release on the 1st of march so not long to wait uh, speaking of weight new balance have still kept this shoe super light so even though they've added a deeper stack of cushion into that midsole my pair in a uk 10 tip the scale at 224 grams and I mean that's more like racing weight than training shoe weight. When it comes down to midsole stats we've got an increased stack height of 30 mil at the heel 24 mil under the forefoot giving the Rebel V4s a 6 mil heel offset. I personally think a 6 mil drop is a great height to have on a running shoe. It gives you that little bit of lift when needed but it's not too high not too dominant that it gets in the way. As far as the construction goes, let's start off at the top with the new lightweight Phantom Fit Upper. So New Balance are utilising this super thin, uh, highly breathable, almost see-through sort of engineered mesh. And they're actually using that on their new Go Faster carbon plated race day shoe, the Elite V4s, which we've also just got hold of at the channel for testing. So keep your eyes peeled for that video coming soon. I'd say we've got a moderate level of padding around the ankle collar and in the heel cup. Uh, and speaking of the heel, it does look like quite an unusual design. It looks like it's quite shallow in the back end of that upper. So going to be really interesting to see how that fits and how that feels on today's run. We've got a pretty thin tongue design in the Rebel V4. Uh, I'm happy to say that tongue is gusseted inside the upper. And we've also got the addition of this sort of structured internal band wrapping around the midfoot. That's just there to make sure you feel nice and snug and nice and secure inside that upper. And this has always been one of the standout features for me when it comes to the Rebel model, and that is how well it sort of hugs and fits my foot shape. So hopefully it will be the same case in these. It does look like there's maybe a little bit more width and depth in the toe box of the new shoe compared to the previous V2s and V3s. They were both pretty narrow on fit, which actually worked really well for my foot shape, but I think some people did struggle with them being too narrow. So I've got my fingers crossed that that increased volume in the upper isn't gonna affect the fit in a negative way for me. Moving down to the midsole, and we're seeing a lot of changes here as well. Firstly, we've got more cushioning, so a deeper stack height, but also you can see we've got a wider platform to run off on the Rebel V4, so it should add a little bit of underfoot stability to the shoe. Uh, obviously, these are still a neutral running shoe, but I think that wider profile should help. When it comes down to the blend of fuel cell foam, uh, New Balance have added some Piba to the original EVA this time round, which should make for a very interesting ride because 
Piba is used in a lot of the, the carbon plated race day shoes out there these days. And it's used because it is super bouncy, very efficient and high energy returning. So another standout feature of the Rebel model for me was midsole performance. So now we've got a bit of Piba in that EVA as well. Really excited to test out the performance of this midsole. I'm happy to say this is still a non-plated running shoe, which is a breath of fresh air in today's running shoe market. But it also means that we've got a good bit of flex at the midfoot of the midsole there and it's not overly stiff and then last but not least flipping them over we've got a good helping of blown rubber in all the high wear areas on the outsole just for a bit of extra grip but also durability so there you have it the new lightweight daily trainer from New Balance, the Fuel Cell Rebel V4. Uh, I think I've waffled on enough about the shoe and it's time to put these to the test. But just before I do that, if you have been watching the channel, you find it helpful, you're enjoying the content, but you're yet to subscribe, maybe today is the day. Super simple to do just by clicking on that little red box down there in the corner. Only takes a few seconds and it is completely free, but it's a massive help to the channel. While you're there, don't forget to hit that bell icon as well because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting content. But I'm off to get changed. I'm gonna grab the GoPros and we'll see you guys out on the run. The other day when I wore my sunglasses, it definitely was wishful thinking. However, today we definitely need them. Gorgeous conditions in Cornwall, beautiful sunshine, hardly a cloud in the sky. So we grabbed the sun gods and they're definitely helping out with this low sun, but it's gonna be a great run today in these awesome conditions. Okay, so we just come up to the top of the hill to get away from the noisy traffic. Plus, it is a pretty spectacular view from here. We are just coming up to five and a half miles into the run and the Rebel V4s are feeling really good. The first thing I'm gonna say is, I was definitely right when it comes to the width and the volume in the shoe. There does seem to be a bit more width in the toe box and I have had to pull the laces down a little bit tighter around my midfoot compared to the V2s and the V3s just to get that lockdown, but I still feel super secure in the upper. I personally would always recommend going up half a size in New Balance shoes. There was one time I didn't do it and I ended up with lots of black toenails. So ever since then, I've gone up half a size to a UK 10. And again, these Rebel V4s in a UK 10 are fitting perfectly when it comes to the length of the shoe. So the fit feels good. I feel nice and secure around the midfoot. I wasn't sure about the heel design, but I feel really well locked into the heel as well. So run is going well. Like I said, five and a half miles down already. We're gonna hope for double figures today. Depends on how the shoes feel and how my body and legs feel, but so far, so good. as the sun sets on a beautiful day here in Cornwall. Hopefully we'll get some more weather like this. It has been awesome. So nice to run with just a short sleeve tee on and no jacket or gilet inside. It really has been great. Body and legs feel nice and strong. We just ticked over 10 and a half miles. So 
really positive that my legs are feeling strong because I'm going to be taking on a challenging hilly coastal 50k this coming Saturday. So this run has definitely given me a lot of confidence. As far as the shoe goes, well, that's been pretty impressive as well. So very rebel-like. It feels really well balanced, super lightweight, fits my foot really well. And that new blend of fuel cell with that added Piba, you know, it feels nice and comfortable and cushioned at the slower tempo. So we started the run at about eight minute, eight, 30 minute mile in, and then we've upped the pace as we've gone. And I've even managed a couple of miles at sub seven minute mile in, and that fuel cell just comes to life. It feels really responsive, high energy returning, and they just feel exciting to run in. So it really has been a mega run. And I think it's gonna be around 13 miles, sort of half marathon distance by the time we get back. So that is great, a bit of extra training in the legs. I wasn't expecting to run that far, but let's get back to the studio and we're gonna break down how these new Rebel V4s have performed on this run. But I gotta say, it's just been a brilliant run. Well, to say that was a positive run would be a massive understatement because I was just heading out for 10 miles today and ended up running 13.56 because my legs and the new shoes felt really good. So that wraps up a 40 mile week after being poorly. And I think today's run was the first time I felt like my lungs weren't struggling. So hopefully it's gonna be onwards and upwards from now on. As far as the fuel cell Rebel V4s go, well, it was kind of positive on every level. There were a few things about the new design that I wasn't fully convinced by before the run. Number one being this sort of low design on the ankle collar and the heel cup. And number two, the fact that New Balance had added a bit of width and volume to that upper. I was really worried that these changes were going to affect the sort of glove-like fit that I got from the Rebel V2s and Rebel V3s. However, I shouldn't have worried because this upper felt great out on the run. And if anything, it felt a little bit better having a bit more wiggle room in that toe box, but it still felt really well held around the midfoot and in the heel. And I actually really enjoyed every aspect of this new Phantom Fit upper. Midsole performance was on point as well, and I, I do think that this wider profile made the shoe feel a little bit more planted and a little bit more stable underfoot. Not that I had any issues in the previous two versions, but if you did find that those shoes felt a little bit unstable, then I think this wider platform will really help. The only thing I would say is, Maybe the V4s didn't feel as nimble as the Rebel V2s and the Rebel V3s. And that's just because we've got more cushioning underfoot. So that deeper and wider stack of the soft stuff in the midsole. But, you know, that really would be splitting hairs because they still felt nice and responsive and exciting to run in. So rounding up, I personally think this is a great update. And I think New Balance have hit it out of the park when it comes to the new Fuel Cell Rebel V4. They've created another lightweight, high energy returning very versatile neutral daily trainer and you know if you like your training shoes to give you that light kind of race shoe vibe then these are definitely worth a closer look obviously this is just my first impressions after today's run and I can see myself racking up some good miles in these over the coming weeks and then we'll be back on the channel with a, a full in-depth review of the Rebel V4 after today's run going so well, I am really excited to test out the Fuel Cell Elite V4. So that's kind of the carbon plated race shoe brother of these. Uh, I tried them on inside just to check the sizing. And if anything, the midsole on the Elite V4s feels even more responsive than these. So I think it's going to be an exciting run and that will be coming to the channel soon. I've got to give a big shout out to Ali from New Balance for sending the shoes through for testing. It really is appreciated, mate, and a big help to the channel. Uh, really hope you enjoyed coming along on my first run in the Rebel V4s. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be back on the channel very soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. It's really appreciated. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. New Balance have still kept this shoe extremely light, even though we've got a deeper stack of cushioning in the midsole. So my pair in a UK 10 tipped the scales at only 240 24. That's just to make sure you feel nice and secure and nice and well held inside that upper. 
And while you're there, maybe give that little bell icon a click because then you'll be notified when we upload any new content to the channel. But I'm off to get changed. I'm gonna grab the trainers. Oh, no. Tra it's cameras, not trainers. Why do I keep saying trainers?